So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about the phases in a parallel stream. And in particular, we're going to talk about how it all works kind of under the hood. So uh, this will give you a good sense of, of what's happening. And uh, we'll talk later about what parts of these phases you can actually control. Some of them you can, some of them you can't. So the best way to think about a parallel stream is to think about it in terms of kind of a MapReduce style programming model. It's a little bit of a variant of that. And it's a MapReduce model that's optimized for multi-core processors. There are, of course, other MapReduce models, like the MapReduce model that's used by Google. And uh, in the MapReduce model that Google uses, they use distributed systems as opposed to multi-core systems. No laptops, please. So basically, here's the way it works. You can think of it something along these lines. It's a little bit humorous, but it gets the point across. So let's say we want to make a sandwich. And let's say we have lots of helpers. Chances are we want to make a lot of sandwiches, but we'll at least make one here. So what we first do is we go ahead and we take the, uh, the input, which would be our refrigerator, perhaps, with lots of yummy food in it. And we start by partitioning it up into these different food groups. So we've got bread, lettuce, some kind of meat, cheese, and uh, tomatoes. So that's the partitioning phase. We've, we split the source of input up into multiple chunks. And you can imagine like there might be a different person handling each one of these things. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the map phase. So we're going to go ahead and perform some computation or some kind of processing on each of the inputs. And obviously, what we're doing here is we're slicing things up. So we slice the bread. We slice the lettuce. We slice the meat. We slice the cheese. We slice the tomatoes and onions or whatever else you're going to put in the sandwich. So that's the map phase. And then after we've done that transformation, we can apply the reduce phase, where we're going to take the appropriate slices and then assemble them together into the result, which in this case is a tasty sandwich. Some of you like tasty sandwiches. So that's kind of the model to think about. And you can imagine if you had lots of people and, and lots of sandwiches to make, this might be an improvement because you can essentially parallelize the processing and pipeline it and so on. As I mentioned a couple times before, MapReduce is one way to look at this, but it's really more of this split apply combine data processing strategy, which is described at this link here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to split, then apply the computations on what we've split up, and then we're going to combine the results. So let's take a look at each of those uh, phases. So the split phase is going to involve recursively partitioning the original data source into a bunch of independent chunks. Now, this is what you don't have to do this in quite the same way when you're doing things with sequential streams. So with sequential streams, we're just going to you know, sort of split it up into chunks. Um, well, we're not even going to split it up into chunks. We're just going to go ahead and um, try to advance through the thing one at a time. But for parallel streams, we're actually going to do splitting. And so it's going to be done by this method called tri-split. And that's going to be used to recursively chop up the input into these chunks. So it's like divide and conquer. It's like taking a pizza and slicing it up into little chunks so you could hand it out to people to eat in parallel. The way this done, is done, of course, is through splitterators. We've talked about this before. We'll talk a lot more about this now. What we talked about before was in the context of sequential splitterators. And that's where the tri-advanced method is used. We're now going to talk about parallel splitterators. And that's going to use the tri-split method. And it should go without saying that there's already predefined splitterators that are defined on the existing classes in the Java Collections framework. So everybody comes out of the box with a splitterator defined on it. And naturally, you can come along and define your own custom splitterators, as we will do when we talk about the search stream splitterator example a little bit later, where we do all this stuff in parallel. And it's, it's really cool. As a general rule of thumb, parallel streams perform better if the data sources they work on can be split efficiently and evenly. So the, the faster you can split things up into even-sized chunks, the better it's going to work. And the reason for that, of course, is if you split everything up into even-sized chunks, then you only have to do sort of log n splits in order to get yourself to the atomic elements that you need to process through the apply phase. So the apply phase is going to take all the chunks that are created during the partition phase or the split phase and it's going to throw them into 
a pool of worker threads, which is, of course, the fork join pool. And in, specifically, it's going to be the common fork join pool. We'll talk more about that. There's only one common fork join pool or, that's used by a parallel stream. And so each of the chunks that's split will be put into the fork join pool, and then a thread will take that chunk and will start to process it. Interestingly enough, the way that splitting and applying occur in a parallel stream itself can go on in parallel. So it doesn't work by first splitting everything and then starting to process in parallel. As the splitting begins, it starts putting those things into the fork join pool, and then the threads will kind of wake up and start doing their, their thing. So you can overlap splitting and applying in parallel too, so get even further uh, speed up. Programmers have some control over how many threads there are in the pool. And we'll talk quite a bit about this. I'll give you a quick overview in this discussion about parallel streams, how you can configure the number of threads in the common fork join pool. That's kind of the sledgehammer-like way of doing it. And we'll talk later when we talk about the fork join pool itself about a more advanced way of being able to control the number of threads using something called a managed blocker. And then the final stage is the combined phase, where we take those partial results that were processed in parallel in the fork join pool, and we start joining them back together again. We merge them all back together, so we end up with a single reduced result when all is said and done. And of course, this is done by terminal operations like collect and reduce. So that's just a quick overview of the phases. We will break each of those phases down in a lot more detail later, and I'll give you many examples of how you can actually perform the splitting and the combining through custom splitterators and custom collectors. And then I'll also show you later, and you'll get some chance to play around with the concept of being able to have managed blockers that will ensure the right number of threads are in the thread pool as the computations take place.